Hi Minnesota Gardeners, I'm Julie Weisenhorn with University of Minnesota Extension and I am here in my pollinator friendly landscape once again to talk about plant selection. In other words, right plant and right place. The entry garden is a very important part of a home landscape. It's the part of the landscape that welcomes visitors to your landscape, to your home. It highlights your front door and points people to the door so that they know where it is and how to come in. It's also a great place that you can put a lot of variety and get away with it. So in my entry garden here, I have, it's a little early in the spring yet or in the summer, but we've got some things blooming and I've got a lot of native plants here. You can see the different heights. You can see different textures. We've got some flowers that are blooming at this point, but lots of different variety here. And that's one of the great things about an entry garden. When you're choosing a plant for a location in your yard, there are three important things to look at. One is your soil type, your sun amount, and the space that you have available for planting. So soil, sun, space. So let's take a look at my site. This was a site of a plant that just didn't make it through our, our tough winter. So it's time to replace it with something different. The soil that I have here is pretty good soil. One way that you can tell is you can have a soil test done at the University of Minnesota Soil Testing Lab, but you can also find out about your soil just by taking a handful of it and pinching it into a ball, a tight ball. If it holds a shape like this, you know you've got some clay in there. If it doesn't hold a shape at all, it's a sandy soil. If you give it a poke with your finger and it breaks and crumbles like this, you can consider it a clay loam. A little bit of clay, a little bit of loam. Loam is comprised of plant debris that's broken down, some sand and good aggregates. You can see the different sizes here. So this is a good growing soil. If you pinch it together and you can't break it apart, even as hard as you try to poke it with your finger, you know you've got some heavy clay soil. It's important to know that because the soil is the foundation of your garden. You want to be sure to have a good foundation, just like you would if you were building a house. The second important thing to consider is the amount of space that you have available for the plant and how big the plant is going to get. And the best tool for that, good old measuring tape. You want to think about access also. So here we have our rain barrel. We have a hose here. We want to be able to access that easily, right? We also have a drain down here. And this drain has a pipe that comes out this side of it. So I know I can't plant over to this area. But we don't want to have a plant that's blocking that drain. We want that to flow easily. We also don't want to block our hose access. You don't want to drag a hose through that plant. So you want to be sure that that's accessible and easily, easy to get to. The other thing to think about too is overhangs, is to look up and to decide where that overhang is. You want your plant to be under the overhang or outside the overhang. Any excess water that might come down from that roof, you don't want it to land in the middle of the plant. It can be really hard on it. It can cause the plant to fall. Uh, it can also rot out the center of the plant. So you want to be sure that that plant is under the overhang or outside the overhang. So I'm going to use my measuring tape. I've already dug a hole here for demonstration purposes, but I'm going to show you how I came to this. I looked at the space I had and I measured out about 24 inches like that. And if I center that on the post that I put in here and then check it this way as well, I can see that I'll have plenty of room for that plant to grow. See that again? 12 inches here, lots of room here, access, lots of room over here. Likewise, it's not going to block the cat mint and it's not going to block the hose over here. So I know that my plant should be about 24 inches wide at the mature size. So this is the size that it will grow to and reach in its mature size, not the size necessarily that you'll buy in a pot at the nursery. Then you want to look at height. And when you're thinking about height, think about how the plant will frame your house, whether it will block a window or not, or a door. 
You want to think about also the rule of thirds. Now the rule of thirds has to deal with the more artistic part of design. Here we have a cat mint plant. It gets to be about 24 inches tall. So we want to think of a plant that's going to be a little bit taller than that, about a third taller than that. So that would be about a 36 inch plant. That will give you a really nice movement from the lower plant to the taller plant to your house. Creates a nice blending of plant and building together. So if I look at this plant here, and this plant, let's say 36 is what we figured for the height, based on the height of the cat mint there. Oh, there we go. So 36 inches, that will look pretty good. If it's a little bit above that, it'll show above the cat mint. It'll be a nice height over here to complement the planter. Looks like a good height. So our plant size we're looking for is about 24 inches by 36 inches. And I say about because it may not be perfectly that high, it might be, not be exactly. So you can get within a range of that and be pretty safe. So the third S is sun. And we want to determine how much sun our space is going to have. This is a pretty full sun location. But morning sun is different than afternoon sun. This is an easterly facing location. So the sun is going to be cooler, less intense, less likely to actually cause your plants to wilt in the heat. Afternoon sun, on the, if we were on the other side of my house, that's the western facing part of the house. And that sun is very intense. We know this because as gardeners, we like to do our hard work in the morning when it's cooler and save the afternoon for sitting in the shade and reading a good book about plants, of course. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to actually observe the amount of light that your space has. Now I'm looking at this, it's 1230 in the middle of the day and we're still in a fairly bright location, right? So here we want to determine, well, we've got about six hours of full sun. That is considered full sun. Uh, eight would be even better, uh, but we have about six hours of full sun here. So we can look for a plant that will tolerate some full sun and will grow well in that. The other that we might think about is the afternoon. Now in the afternoon, the plant will be in the shade. So a full to part sun type plant is what we're looking for. A plant that will do well in full sun, six or plus hours, or part sun, about three to six hours. This ends part one of this series of Right Plant, Right Place. In part two, we're gonna look at actually using a plant database for plant selection plugging in all these characteristics that we want in a plant and seeing what we get. Part three, we're gonna talk about actually choosing the plant and putting it in the ground. For more information about any kind of planting or gardening, you can visit the extension.umn.edu yard and garden webpages.